In the opening scene of The Dark Knight, the Joker and the crew he's put together rob a bank. The Joker steals the money, kills his entire crew and makes a clean getaway. It's a very well shot, well acted, fun and entertaining scene. It's a brilliant example of Christopher Nolan at his best and it's one of the worst bank heist plans in movie history. It's very easy to watch this scene, not think too much about it and just accept the Joker as a criminal genius who pulls off this incredible heist. The clip of the Joker's bank heist has 120 million views on YouTube and many of the top comments praise the Joker for his amazing, ingenious plan. But a thorough analysis of the Joker's plan exposes it as a disastrously thought out mess that will almost certainly go badly wrong. The main problem is that the plan has too many critical success factors. A critical success factor is something that needs to happen in order for there to be a successful outcome. Let's take a much simpler and considerably better thought out and more realistic movie bank heist to demonstrate the concept of critical success factors. Luke and Robin's first bank heist from the 2012 movie, The Place Beyond the Pines, a movie I highly recommend. The main character, Luke, robs a small bank with a local mechanic named Robin who he's recently met. They carry out some intelligence and planning, then hit the bank. Here's how the heist goes. Luke drives to the bank on a dirt bike, enters with his helmet and sunglasses still on. He takes control of the lobby, hands a small bag to a teller, puts a gun to his head and tells him to go round and fill the bag. Then takes the bag, exits the bank and drives to the getaway van where Robin hides him inside and drives off. There are 8 critical success factors in this plan. I will give an estimate of the probable chance of success for each. 1. Conspiratorial Integrity no one snitches. There are only two guys in on this heist. Neither of them have anything to gain by snitching and plenty of incentive to pull off the heist. But nothing can be 100% so we'll say the chances of this bank robbery maintaining conspiratorial integrity are 99%. Entry. This is a small bank with next to no security. The only thing that could go wrong is a teller sees Luke walking in dressed in a blank jumpsuit and helmet, panics and hits the alarm before he can get to the lobby. But that's extremely unlikely so the chance of a successful entry is about 98%. Control. Luke takes control of the lobby by screaming like a lunatic and waving a gun around. Alright! Everybody who wants to live, put your hands in the fucking air! Simple and effective. Though there's always a chance you'll get unlucky with an overzealous security guard. We'll say there's a 95% chance he can take effective control of the lobby. 4. Get the money. Luke uses a small bag. He's only trying to rob a small amount of money here. He can get this done in seconds and the only thing that could go wrong is the bank doesn't have enough money on hand that day or a 6 o'clock news hero wannabe while he's trying to get the money. 95% chance of success. 5. Exit the bank. As long as the cops haven't shown up yet, this should be no problem. 95% chance of success. 6. Ride to the van. This is where the odds really start to go against Luke. He's an expert dirt bike rider as is established earlier in the movie, but he could easily crash, slip, get hit by another driver or pick up a police tail that he can't lose. But he is an excellent driver and the van is close, so we'll say 85% he makes it to the van. Finally, the van has to make a clean escape. The only way this could go wrong is if a cop gets suspicious and decides to pull the van over, or just pulls the van over for some bullshit reason so he can ticket the driver, and notices the bike the cops are looking for in the back. But this escape should go smoothly, so we'll give the van getaway a 95% chance of success. The last critical success factor is luck. This just means nothing unexpected arising to mess up the whole plan. Luke's bike might hit a flat, there could be an off-duty cop in the bank who wants to be a hero, or a civilian who wants to save the bank's insurance company from a slightly worse quarterly, or the bike plays up and takes too long to get started on the getaway run, or a satellite falls out of the sky and crashes into the bike. It could be anything. Basically, everything needs to run smooth and the crew needs to get lucky enough not to get unlucky. You can maximize your luck with preparation and experience. Luke is an expert biker, the heist is well planned and they have selected the bank and the time of day they will hit it very carefully. Robin is an experienced mechanic and will have made sure that both the bike and the van are in full working order before they set out. There are also only 6 critical success factors that can be affected by bad luck, so we'll say there's a 95% chance their luck will hold. So with very good odds on all 8 of those critical success factors, the Luke and Robin bank heist has a 64% chance of success, and there is basically nothing they can do to improve those odds. This is an excellently planned and executed heist. The team have done everything they can to maximise their chances of success, and they perform well on game day. This is a great bank robbery because Luke and Robin keep the critical success factors to an absolute minimum and set up the robbery in a way that allows them to fully exploit their skill set.
After two bank robberies, Robin knows instinctively that the odds have turned against them and refuses to hit another bank. You know something, Luke? If you ride like lightning, you're gonna crash like thunder. I'm not gonna let you bring us both down. Fuck that. Don't be such a fucking pussy. No, man. It's over. Can't do it. Won't do it. He even destroys Luke's bike to prevent him attempting another robbery. This kind of ugly, aggressive, blunt force robbery and the nerves, doubts and fears that go with it is as realistic a depiction of a bank heist as you're going to get in a movie. Now let's examine the Joker's bank heist. There are 18 critical success factors in the Joker's plan. For the sake of brevity, I will put my estimate of the odds in the corner of the video. I will then do a more detailed examination explaining how I arrived at those figures after my initial summary of the Joker's plan. If you disagree with my estimates of the odds, please let me know why in the comments. The 18 critical success factors are Conspiratorial integrity. The Joker brings five guys in on this job and none of them can snitch before the heist. On game day, two men have to set up a zip line to the bank building across the street then zip line onto the bank roof. Three men enter the bank on the ground floor, then take control of the lobby. One guy disables the alarm on the roof. The safe cracker then kills the alarm guy, then goes downstairs and cracks the safe. Then the bag man shoots the safe cracker, loads the money and brings it to the lobby. The Joker then kills the bag man. The bus arrives at exactly the right time. The Joker kills the driver. The bus leaves the bank. The Joker escapes the scene. Timing is extremely important in this plan. The bus must arrive at exactly the right time. If it arrives too early, the police will be notified by someone who sees a bus sticking out of a bank building and the cops will arrive before the Joker can escape. If it arrives too late, too much time will have elapsed and the police will have been informed by someone who entered the bank after the crew or who heard gunshots from outside or a wife waiting in a cafe who's wondering why her husband is taking so long at the bank. When a plan involves several time sensitive critical success factors, its chances of success decline significantly and the Joker's plan has six time sensitive factors. Set up the zip line, zip to the roof, disable the alarm, crack the safe, bag the money, kill the crew and the bus arrival. With so many things that have to go right, often within a strict time limit, luck is a huge factor in this plan. There's a no more than 35% chance the Joker's luck holds and nothing goes wrong. So adding all those together, the chance of the Joker's bank heist succeeding is 0.0441%. If we're generous and round up a little, the Joker's chance of success are 1 in 200. To put that into perspective, Kanye West is getting better odds than that by reputable bookmakers of winning the 2024 presidential election. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Now let's go into detail and examine the different parts of the Joker's extremely convoluted plan. The first and by far the worst part of the plan is conspiratorial integrity. The Joker has to put together a crew of five men who don't know each other. It is absolutely necessary that they don't know each other because two of them will each be secretly tasked with murdering another crew member. The Joker has to choose experienced criminals who can get the job done but also don't know or don't care that this is a mob bank and who are also unlikely to rat out the the operation to the feds in exchange for a walk on pending charges or some similar incentive and this is where the plan falls apart. The robbers the Joker chooses are clearly experienced. They work fast and efficiently and show no sign of nerves. Clearly they have done this before. With five crew members this proficient and experienced, one or more of them is very likely to have mob connections since they can't operate in mob territory without paying tribute to the mob boss on their earnings. Otherwise they won't have the mob's protection against other criminals, they won't enjoy any of the immunity the mob have paid for through police and political bribes and of course the mob itself will hunt down any criminal that operates in their territory without permission. Finding five experienced criminals in Gotham with no mob connections is extremely unlikely and if they are connected to the mob they'll probably rat the operation out to the mob in exchange for a reward. There's also a good chance that one of the experienced criminals has pending charges against him. If this is the case, being approached for a bank job would be mana from the gods. He could rat out the operation to the feds and get a walk or a considerably reduced sentence. However, if the Joker is extremely careful in selecting the right men for the job, it is possible he can put together the right team. 
The main problem is that the Joker sabotages his own heist by instructing two of the crew to kill another crew member during the operation. This would almost certainly scare off anyone considering working the bank job, firstly because they might not want to kill anyone, robbing a bank is one thing, murdering someone is something else, but the much greater concern for a crew member being asked to murder an associate during a heist is the possibility that he himself will be killed in turn. It is so obvious that a crew member would figure out the Joker's plan to kill the entire crew that no Nolan points it out in the movie. I'm betting the Joker told you to kill me as soon as we loaded the cash. But any experienced criminal, and frankly anyone who isn't a complete moron, would have this figured out the minute the Joker told him to kill another crew member. It wouldn't take him until the day of the job to realise the mortal danger he will put himself in if he works this job. At this stage he would probably just rat out the operation to the feds or the mob. Even if he just walks away from the job, he's likely to talk about the heist to his friends and associates, and before long, word will get out. The heist will be a failure before it even starts starts and the mob will be looking for the Joker. Bear in mind that the Joker is telling not one but two robbers to kill another crew member. The chances that both will agree to commit on the job murder and that the other three robbers won't rat out the heist are extremely low. The Joker has set up his crew terribly and it is almost certain that conspiratorial integrity will collapse. Here is an interview of a former professional thief talking about the problems that arise when you hire too many people for a job. And the snitches, somebody's going to snitch somewhere along the line or somebody was in bed with their wife and they told them what's going on and the wife doesn't like him anymore. The less people to know, the better. And that's how robbery should go. Setting up the zip line should go smoothly, but bear in mind, these are hired thieves, not mountain climbers. It's very unlikely they know what they're doing here and there's a decent chance they will set up the zip line wrong, forget some essential piece of equipment or fall to their deaths during the zip to the roof. And even if they do this right, there's no guarantee they'll be able to do it quickly especially since they probably have no experience with zip lines. Entering the bank should go smoothly, although the Joker and two crew members do run across the sidewalk and up the steps with their masks on and guns out, which probably isn't a good idea. Taking control of the lobby is the easiest part of the plan. Three experienced gunmen armed to the teeth will do this no problem. Making everyone hold grenades is also an excellent tactic, especially since the grenades are dummies and can't end up killing any of the crew. But there's always the chance that some guard or overzealous accountant in the middle of a midlife crisis will show up and make things hard. Nolan does throw a bit of drama into the scene by having a mobster working at the bank go after the crew with a shotgun. However, despite the interruption, the Joker is able to maintain effective control of the lobby. Disabling the alarm is another easy win. The main potential problem is time. It might take longer than expected to disable the alarm, which won't leave enough time to do everything else before the bus arrives. Killing the alarm guy should be fine, assuming the Joker has achieved the near impossible feat of hiring someone smart enough to crack the safe, but also stupid enough to agree to kill a fellow crew member and not realise that he will himself be killed in turn. Possible ways this murder can go wrong is the gun jams, he misses, he wounds but does not kill the alarm guy, the gun backfires, he forgets to turn the safety off, or the alarm guy sees him pull out the gun and stops him, or the safe cracker has a change of heart, runs out of the bank, gives up on the life of crime and becomes a priest. There's actually quite a lot that can go wrong here. Next, the safe has to be cracked. According to USA Safe and Vault, it takes 120 minutes on average to break into a class 3 vault, but we'll assume the Joker has hired some sort of safe cracking genius for this job and that he knows exactly what safe the mob bank uses. In the movie, the safe cracker breaks into the vault in exactly 2 minutes, despite the fact that he receives a 5000 volt shock in the process. I'm no safe expert, but it does seem to me that there's a good chance that breaking into this vault will take too long and the mob or the cops will show up before the crew can get to the money. Next, the safe cracker has to be taken out. Same potential snags as with the murder of the alarm guy, but with the added probability that the safe cracker would have figured out by now that he is himself going to be killed once he is no longer of use. By having him killed as soon as the vault is open, the Joker is also assuming there won't be any additional locks to deal with inside the vault. Now, one bagman has to fill 8 bags with money and take them to the lobby. Bags of money are always light in movies, in reality they are very heavy. So loading and moving the bags is actually going to take a while, time during which something could easily go wrong, especially since the Joker is now the only crew member holding down the lobby. The last part of this heist before the bus arrives would involve, according to the Joker's original plan, killing the gunman and the bagman, but the gunman was killed by the hero manager, so it's just the bagman. The director, Christopher Nolan, at least respects the audience's intelligence enough to know that we expect the bagman to have figured out the Joker's murderous intentions by now, and so Nolan allows for this. 
I'm betting the Joker told you to kill me as soon as we loaded the cash. The problem is, why doesn't the bagman just kill the Joker? He has just ruthlessly murdered the safecracker. That's almost certainly not his first murder, so why does he hesitate to kill this last crew member who means nothing to him? If an experienced criminal seriously thought his life was in danger here, he wouldn't waste time asking questions. He would just shoot the guy immediately. The Joker killing the bagman is the least likely of the three kills to come off smoothly, but it is still likely he'll be able to do it, assuming, of course, that this impressively bad plan has gone according to the Joker's optimistic projections up to this point. So the bus arrives and kills the bagman. The Joker, of course, knowing exactly when and where the bus would arrive because this movie is a dark, grounded, gritty and realistic take on the comic book genre. The bus arriving at the right time is a huge gamble. The most obvious potential problem is that it will get caught in traffic or the driver miscalculates how long it will take to drive to the bank and leaves too early or too late. Next, the Joker and the bus driver have to load the money. This seems like an easy task, but in fact their attention is taken away from everyone in the bank while they are doing this. The Joker is extremely vulnerable here. Someone who had been hiding up to this point could trigger the alarm, make a phone call, or, if it's a mob employee, shoot the Joker while his back is turned, or cops could run in the front door while the Joker's busy loading the money. Shooting the bus driver should be easy enough, the only possible issue is that the bus driver may have had plans of his own. Driving the bus out of the bank shouldn't be a problem as long as the Joker knows how to drive a bus, and the cops haven't arrived yet, though it is hard to imagine that no one would have called the cops after seeing a bus drive into a bank building. Getting away in a massive, slow, very visible vehicle is not likely. We are expected to believe that the Joker has timed it so that the bus pulls out of the bank at the very moment a long row of school buses is passing by. In the likely event he doesn't pull out at exactly the right moment to blend into these buses, he might still be able to blend his bus into the traffic if the police are not yet aware that a school bus is the getaway vehicle, and that's a big if. The timing of everything has to match up and the Joker has to be very lucky for nothing to go wrong in this complicated plan. The heist is unrealistic to the point of absurdity. It takes place in a bubble disconnected from the outside world. No one seems to mind the three armed masked men running into a bank. No one seems bothered by the zip line leading onto the bank roof. No one outside the bank hears any of the many gunshots. No one walks into the bank during the heist. And they could, the crew doesn't lock the door on the way in. No one calls the cops after a bus drives into a bank building or at any other point during this robbery. The Joker's heist has the appearance of being genius because it is intricate and complex and has many twists and turns that all need to happen at just the precise moment for it all to come together. But that is exactly why it is such a terrible plan. It's far too complicated. It has too many moving parts. It relies on too many things happening at exactly the right time. Far too much is left up to chance. The Joker's awful planning isn't just a problem for the scene itself, it's a problem for the Joker's character development. He's supposed to be a criminal mastermind. This scene is intended to show off his strategic brilliance, but when I watch it, all I see is an amazingly dumb plan put together by someone who clearly doesn't have much, if any, experience in criminal endeavours. That is not to say this isn't a brilliant scene. It is. It's very entertaining, well shot, well acted, fun, dramatic, tense and cool. And the Joker reveal at the end is deservedly iconic. But we should bear in mind that we are watching a comic book movie here. The Dark Knight is often thought of as a more realistic, down to earth and gritty take on the Batman franchise. But there is nothing grounded or realistic about this. This scene, and indeed, the entire movie, requires just as much suspension of disbelief as the Batman movies of the 90s. If this bank heist was presented to the audience on paper, it would become clear immediately that it's a terrible plan that will almost certainly fail. Alright boys, we're gonna hit this bank. You'll be a five-man team. So you're coming? No. You'll meet the fifth man on the street outside just before you enter the bank. Hey, I'm not doing a job with a guy I never seen. He could be a fucking fed for all I know. Fuck that. Don't be such a fucking pussy. What's this fifth guy look like? He's about my height and size and his hair is almost identical to mine. Safe cracker and alarm guy, you'll zip line onto the bank roof from the 25th floor of a building across the street. But I've never zipped line before. I don't even know how to- Fuck that. Don't be such a fucking pussy. Once you get onto the roof, Break open the electrical mains box and disable the alarm. Bagman and gunman, while they're doing that, you take control of the bank, put a grenade in everyone's hands and pull the pin so they have to Wait, hold the- Wait, hold on. 
How do we actually enter the bank? You park your car outside, then run across the sidewalk and enter through the front door. Make sure you have your masks on and guns at the ready before you enter the bank. But what if someone sees us and calls the cops? Fuck that. Don't be such a fucking pussy. So after you take control of the lobby, Bagman heads to the vault. Once Safecracker cracks it, load the bags with money and put them in a big pile at the far end of the lobby near the rear doors. It's gonna take a while to load that much cash. What if the cops show up while we're loading the bags? Fuck that. And why are we taking the money to the back? door. The car is going to be parked outside the front door. Fuck that. Once we have the bags loaded, then we jump back into the car, escape and divvy up the loot. What about this fifth guy? Why is he in on it? What do we need him for? He's a stick up man. How about Bagman stays downstairs and sticks the place up, while Alarm Guy and Safe Cracker load the bags? That way we don't need to bring another guy in on the job. Fuck that. I'm just saying, if we- Don't be such a fucking pussy. So that's the plan. Any questions? No? Good. We hit the bank tomorrow. Now, before we all break for the day and go home and don't say anything to anyone about this, I have a special secret task for two of you. Safecracker and Bagman. I'll speak to each of you privately in that room over there. Hey, hold on a minute. We're Fuck that. Thanks for listening, subscribe, and don't forget that whatever doesn't kill the like button only makes it...